So today is a really exciting day. <clears throat> I've been waiting to do this project for, oh, probably over a year since we started talking to a really, really special company about an addition that we want to make to our boat. We originally planned this addition to go on Steel Melody uh, and we were in talks with them about putting this piece of equipment on Steel Melody uh, and now that we're going on, on Ocean Melody, it's going on Ocean Melody for obvious reasons. Uh, but today we are installing our hydrovane and that's like the most exciting news ever. It's just a fantastic piece of kit. If you don't know what a hydrovane is, all will become clear, um, but it's all over on the pontoon here, ready to be unboxed. Uh, we've packaged it down into a few boxes and brought it down onto the pontoon, uh, ready to install. Come and have a look. When the hydrovane arrives, it arrives in a whole load of different boxes. Um, but what we've done is we've packaged it all down into fewer so that we can get it here easier. Um, and I'm gonna lay it all out on the dock, on the pontoon here, so that we can see what's what. There you go. I've laid it all out pretty much as it's gonna go on the boat. Let's have a quick look at what you've actually got. Now, all hydrovanes are identical, the way that they work. The operation is obviously their amazing system, uh, but, what you'll find is that they work very, very closely with every customer to get the exact right setup because there are quite a lot of configurables like the t type of wing vane that goes on the top and the mounting system particularly. Those are the two main things. The, the actual drive unit and the, the shaft and the rudder, they're all exactly the same on every kit. But let's have a quick look. So the vane that we've got is this one. It's called the XT vane. XT stands for extendable. If you look at this here, you can undo that and the vane extends outwards telescopically. And the reason we've gone for that is because we've got a mizzenmast with a uh, with a boom that slightly overhangs the transom, although we may be doing something about that. But it means that this can be just collapsed down when you jibe or tack, when you bring the boom across basically, and then put back up rather than having the boom swing across and take that out. And that attaches to the drive unit which is this section here which is where the magic happens that's where the all of the the gearing and what have you actually causes that to turn the inside of this post this isn't just a piece of tube this has got a bearing inside so the wind turns that which in turn turns these gears which in turn turns the center of this shaft which turns the rudder and these sections here are the A bracket, which will support the bottom. This, these here are H brackets. We've actually got two of them. I'm gonna send one back. We were originally gonna mount this on Steel Melody. So I got one for the bottom, one for the top, but we don't need that one. So that's going back. This is going on the top. The A bracket's going on the bottom and that's going back. You also get in the pack, of course, your pin, your tiller, the counterweight, uh, and then you have to decide whether you want the plastic or teak pads. Um, this is your control uh, string cord to uh, change the angle of the vane. And I, I actually went to the extra mile and bought the, uh, the um, spares kit. So if anything breaks while we're out at sea, we can, we can fix it. And then you've got the instructions and what have you there. So there you go. This is gonna be a, a bit of a mammoth job. Now, one thing that makes it so much easier is the fact that there are the installation videos that Hydrovane have got on their website are sweet. They're absolutely amazing. So uh, anybody wanting to install these can just go and watch those videos. I've watched them through several times and I'm probably gonna watch them again on my phone before I embark on this this morning. Uh, but it really should be a dead simple operation. The only thing that we're going to, my friend Chris has just gone up to the hardware store to buy is a length of 50 mil plastic pipe so that when we're assembling it, we can use plastic pipe instead of this to line everything up because it's a lot lighter and a small piece of tarpaulin that we can tape under the boat, under the transom to catch any little bits of fiberglass. Um, so yeah, this is gonna be a really, really interesting install. But what's it for? What's the point of the hydrovane? Well, the hydrovane is like an extra crew member. They actually market it as that and it really is. What it basically does, you can angle that wing into the wind and then it will then steer the boat for you, as long as the wind direction doesn't change too much. If it does, you have to reset it, that's fine. 
but it means that you can get your hands off the, the, the wheel or the tiller uh, and you can get on and do other things. You can trim the sails, you can go and make a cup of tea, you can go to the loo and so many people uh, have testified that they've crossed the whole of the Atlantic or the whole of the Pacific never once steering manually just letting the hydrovane steer them the entire way across I think that's exceptional because uh, you need perfect conditions for that to happen but these things are proven and tested they're the Rolls-Royce system basically uh, for getting the boat to steer herself and the lovely thing about it no electric whatsoever and the other thing I really like about it is redundancy now this thing, as you notice, has got a huge rudder of its own. A lot of self-steering wind steering systems use a trim tab, uh, which then powers some cords which go to a wheel on your steering wheel. And those systems work fine, nothing wrong with them at all. But for me, what I like is the fact that this has got its own independent rudder. So you lash the rudder of your boat in the middle, lock it off in the middle, or trimmed slightly, um, and then this does all of the steering for you, which means if you have a problem with your primary steering system, you've got redundancy. You can switch over and steer the boat continuously on this rudder. It's arguably gonna be more effective than our primary rudder because it's semi-balanced. Um, so, and the other thing is, you can't, uh, it's not just the wind that can steer this. This section here, you can put a bilge pump handle into it and you can use this as an emergency tiller and you can then stick onto that the attachment for the push-pull type linear tiller pilot. So we will have on our boat our primary steering wheel with our autopilot. So that's, you know, you've got uh, manual and automatic uh, autopilot steering. On top of that, we'll then have the wind steering with an emergency tiller and we've got an emergency tiller on our primary steering as well and the attachment for a tiller pilot uh, so we've got layer upon layer upon layer of redundancy should we have any problems with our steering systems and uh, around this neck of the woods or a bit further south around Biscay and around Gibraltar and stuff there's been quite a lot of uh, encounters shall we say with orca uh, and that's becoming quite an interesting natural phenomenon. So, and they are tending to go for boat rudders. I'm not saying that it's like a huge deal in every boat going through there has problems, far from it. There's thousands and thousands of boats go through that, pass it, that area with no issues. But if you were to have an encounter with an orca and they do go for the rudder, which is a known thing, um, you've at least got some degree of redundancy and some degree of protection there, uh, rather than having to jury rig some sort of homemade Heath Robinson kind of rudder system. We've already got it, got it deployed. We're all set up to start. We've got this plastic pipe, which fits in the brackets properly. Um, one thing I will say is these collars, which are take up the, the slack in the brackets, uh, people drop them in the sea. And so it's really important not to lose that because it's not just a piece of plastic. It's uh, a, like a, a, a milled, uh, machined part and it's made of particular stuff so you can't just use this but but what I'm doing is using this plastic tube down here um, instead of the stainless steel tubing because that stuff's really heavy to work with so that fits nicely into these brackets and will mean that we can assemble it all um, square everything up make sure everything fits and, and, and is, is perfectly in line perfectly straight and then switch out for the um, for the stainless pieces and also for the A bracket the, they're supplied with way more stainless tube than we need so rather than cut it down and make mistakes and waste it we can make mistakes with the plastic tube and then uh, and then cut down the stainless to to uh, they're exactly the right lengths first thing I'm going to do is measure across the back of the transom and uh, put a mark into dead center now we've decided to put our hydrovane dead center for several reasons when we are using the mizzen mast the yawl uh, the only time we're going to be using the hydrovane with the mizzen, the mizzen boom is not going to be dead center. It's going to be either to port or to starboard. Uh, so that's the, the place where it's least likely to actually impede on the functioning of the, the, um, mizzen, the mizzen sail. Uh, and the other thing is it will provide a really nice handle because I'm hoping to build a bathing platform off the transom and having the hydrovane in the middle as a, as a strong point will provide a really nice handle to step down onto the bathing platform.
Okay. Oh yeah, I think the next thing we do, we know that we've found the dead centre because there's actually uh, a corking in the teak <laughs> which marks the dead centre. But I think before we start marking the outside and putting Sharpie marks on, uh, I want to empty the LAS um, and have a visualise the back of this so that we can see if we're drilling into something that we shouldn't. So let's do that next. So that's the lazarette before, but having been emptied, which is now full of leaves. Well, it's not full of leaves actually, it's pretty clean, but it, uh, it's a good, 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 good thing emptying it because it means we can give it a proper clean out. This is the back of the transom, and, uh, and we're pretty good. The only thing I'd say is I probably want to unscrew this little, um, this little electrical box and move it out of the way somewhat. Uh, the other thing that I'm wondering is when we this section here is clearly just solid fiberglass but I'm wondering if this is foam core and if it is we either need to put in a tube or some reinforcement of some sort to stop it squashing the foam core uh, it might not be we'll find out when we drill into it so um, yeah that'll be an interesting bit of uh, new learning on the boat as well first thing I'm going to do is move that out of the way Oh dear. Cool. I could almost sleep in here. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, so, that there is ye oldy gas locker, which we need to do a lot of work with eventually. I don't particularly want one of the bottom brackets inside that gas locker because I think it'll be. <clears throat> Well, there's not enough space for one, I don't think. And I think it'll be a colossal pain to get to if there's ever a problem. So I'm thinking about putting the top bracket here in the middle, the bottom bracket over in this corner by the gas locker, and then the other one over there. So not the widest possible spread on the A bracket, but still wide enough. The question is now, how far down, let's see if I can do this with one hand, We've got, yeah, we've got six inches to play with. So the bolt, the, the, the drill holes can be I know, three, four inches down. We've got plenty of room from the, uh, from the top. I think, I think three and a half inches down will be, oops. So looking at that, we've got about three and a half, we've got six inches there uh, of clear room to play with. And that's where our spreader plate's gonna go on the inside, which I've still got to make. But I think, yeah, three, three and a half inches will be the right depth of down for the top bracket. Let's go and see how that looks on the outside. Three and a half inches down. Yeah, that's fine. I'm gonna make a mark there and eye it up and see how that looks. Okay, so I've put a tiny little dot there, which is dead center on the transom, three and a half inches down. So that's where our top bracket will go. And what I need to do is um, work out where the, the drill holes are actually going to be. Uh, tie myself in would be a probably good thing. I need to put a rope on the stern and the front of the dinghy. In actual fact, I was going to put string a tarpaulin underneath, which I probably I might do. But the way the dinghy's positioned, anything I drill won't go in the sea. It will go straight into the dinghy or onto my lap. So we're going to make a we're going to make a, a drilling template. We'll draw around that and put the holes in where they're supposed to be and then mark the dead center of where our little X is on currently on the transom. And I'm going to put the center hole over that little X that I've made and then find where the other holes are. Uh, four mil. Yeah, I was going to say four. Right, I'm going to push and I'm going to gradually move away because this is... Uh, no, that's not going to work. <laughs> Can you take the... <laughs> you film this bit. It's quite entertaining. Oh, very. I could just, I could just um, tie the boat on, tie the dinghy on. Where's the challenge? All those bits of plastic have just gone straight onto the floor of the dinghy and I will vacuum them out. Take that inside, Chris, and oh. then have a look in the gas locker and see if you can see where the hole is. We're looking for a hole. Yeah. Is it is it area above that core, that um, bulgy bit? It is indeed. I think I think that bulgy bit might be foam core, you know. Yeah. We might have to go and make a trip to get some brass tube or something to put over the bolts 
um, if this is foam core. We'll, we'll find out when we drill into it. So there's number one. Let's drill that out to uh, 10 mil, I guess. So I'm opening this up to 10 mil. That was crap. Where I've drilled in there, I feel like I ought to have gone up slightly more degree out maybe it'll took on to up from a five to a six to an eight to a ten it's just chipped the jack. it won't matter because it's going to be behind this spreader plate and the bracket and everything i'm just and i'm annoyed with myself now for doing that let's put a bolt through and see how that fits if you're drilling gel code to stop it chipping you can run the drill in reverse first and it'll just gently take the gel coat away I mean, yeah, yeah. It might still. Chip, uh, and Chris is a marine engineer, and he didn't tell me that before I started. Sorry. I've been working on steel for the last three years, and, and fiberglass is. Uh, I, I, I did actually know that, yeah. but I'd forgotten. Oh, I see. Like a like a, a numpty. So yeah, run the drill in reverse first, and it won't do that. Let's uh, get put a bolt in. See it. See how that fits. And there's our M10 um, bolt. Uh, set screw, whatever you want to call it. It's actually a set screw, not a bolt, because with a bolt, the thread only goes so far and then you have a clean shank. With a set screw, the, th the, the th screws are a th set pitch the whole way down. So, uh, And we're using 316 marine grade cap heads. Thick pipe here in the H bracket, and we're tying a rope onto it so that we, if we drop it, it doesn't end up in the drink. Right, so where are we up to? We've got the nuts, bolts, washers, the attachment, the, the H bracket. It's starting to get a bit, bit chilly, isn't it? Yeah. I'll have to put a, a jacket on in a minute. Let's um, bolt that in place with one nut and bolt. What about the nuts? Did I bring the nuts over as well? Yep. Oh yeah, they, I want the normal spinny nuts because uh, the nylock nuts will just be a pain in the ass. We'll put nylock nuts on for the final fit. Yeah, but just for but for spinning it on without having to get Allen keys and stuff. It's brilliant, this lass is. Yeah, really, really good, isn't it? Mm. So you need that and that, yep. or that and one of them. Do uh, you want to go with uh, backing plate as well? Yeah, with the backing plate. All right, if you pass me that. Which side did you do, port uh, side? I've done port side, so that's starboard side. Or is it? No, uh, that's port side. Yeah, got it. Okay. You got that? Yeah. I believe I do. Oh, bloody hell. Is that bolt long enough? Yep. Perfect. Okay, cool. Spinner on. Jack, would you be able to pass me my tool bag? It's down in the cabin. Oh, thank you. So we are going to be putting spreader plates on the back. I've got some stainless Thanks for your sheets assistance. I'm going to go and cut and drill. Uh, but for this dry fit, oh, yeah, we're just going to put big penny washers and nuts on the back, and then we'll sort out the, the, the spreader plates for the inside later. Right, is that a better camera position? I've got oh, it on, pretty the, good. Got on the transom now. Yes, so what we've discovered, what we need to do is even this up with the spirit level and by eye, drill the pilot hole, drill the main hole, bolt the, bolt the plastic uh, spreader plate on, and then we need to just shape the back of the spreader plate. And we're, to do that, we're going to use a flap wheel on an angle grinder. Now, generally speaking, the man that puts a spirit level on a boat is a bit of a, a loony. But on a boat this size, with the amount of weight that we're adding and moving around, is actually not, not that significant. I think that's OK, but I'm going to need to untie to check. So as you can see, the bubble in the spirit level is now good. I'm just going to push away and just eye that up from a bit of a distance to see if that's... Yeah, that's pretty good, you know. It's really hard to tell. It's really hard to tell. I'm just going to mark it and see if um, the mark's close to the one that we put on originally. Once we got it levelled up, I visualised the original mark that we put in. Do you remember I, this one here, that I measured down precisely the same distance from the top? And it's literally, you can see that dot through the hole. So I'm, I'm fairly confident I've got this right. This I'm nervous about this because this is critical. I mean, it's not because if I, if I got it wrong, I could take the bolt out, fill it, glass it up and re-drill the hole. So it's not like, the end of the world but it, uh, I really want this to be right first time right 
let's drill this next hole. A little bit of backwards action. Yes, backwards action this time. It should, it should like just... Makes sense. Oh, it's, it's sort of worked, it's better. Yeah, maybe just, maybe the, you know, just have to go a little bit more. Go even further backwards. Yeah. Flipping it. Yeah. So it's fine, it's not like... Oh yeah, it is quite thick, isn't it, Joker? It's very thick, yeah. Mm. Get Might it. just have to undo the other one a little bit. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. And this is why, for the dry assembly like this, we're not using nylock uh, locking nuts because... There you go. Okay, yeah? Yeah. Uh, because the nylock nuts would mean that I couldn't, I couldn't hold that with my thumb for Chris to just slacken the nut off, but because we're using standard nuts for this bit, it's... Uh... So, now, the next step of this is that the back of... Our transom has got a curve, right? And the back of this plastic plate is flat. So if we just bolt this up really tight, we could split the gel coat, split the fiberglass. So we want to shape the back of this plastic to fit the, uh, to fit the um, transom. So we're going to bolt this up even Stevens. So it's, it's across the curve in the middle, but it's got a slight gap either side. Draw the curve with a Sharpie, and then we can use a flat wheel on a angle grinder to get that shape right. It's a, bit, it's a bit of a brutal way of doing it, but I think it'll be okay. Mm. Where are we? Are we...? So, I think I need to tighten up on the starboard, slacken the port a little bit. I agree, yeah. Yeah. Can you see that? There's slightly more of a gap on this side than there is on that side. Yeah. Oh, hang on. Let me try and stop that. Go again. Yeah. Yeah, that's tightening up. Lovely. Just say try when... slackening and... the... Oh. Have a look from the top, Chris, see what you think. It's difficult for me to see from the dinghy. Is that about right? OK, they're, they're nipped. They're nipped up. So... Yeah, they're nipped up, lovely. I mean, it's I don't think it's that critical, because there's going to be Sikaflex behind it. I'm not going to start getting feel, feeler gauges out for this. Oh, we can have, I've got some. <laughs> <laughs> if you actually measure, measure how many thou difference there is between the two, I don't think it's that critical. No. And, and we're going to be shaping it with an angle grinder. So it's not like a precision <laughs> To be honest, that's probably where we'll... Uh... That might be the downfall of it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, uh, and it's, are, we, are we miles off, or is that close enough for jazz? No, that's, that's good enough for government work, isn't right. it? Right. Right. So now we're drawing the contour of the transom on the back of this uh, uh, plate. Okay. So I've shaped my uh, my plastic thing. You can't really see because it's just white and it's bright sunlight. But I've I've kind of dished the back of it a bit to take up the shape of the transom. So this now should be able to be bolted to the transom without putting too much strain on it and splitting or cracking anything. I'm thinking we might have to do the same with the teak ones, but the teak ones go lower down on the transom where it's a bit flatter, so maybe we'll get away with that. Mm. Yeah, that fits the transom now. That curvature in the back is just bang on. Lovely. It's not a precision job, but it's, it's pretty, pretty flipping it's impressive. pretty damn close. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. Now, we're going to cinch this up pretty tight now because... Um, it's not the final fit. The final fit will have a spreader plate and Sikaflex and all of the rest of it. But we want to get this fairly tight so that we can um, so we can start working on the other orientation, the in and out, the fore, fore and aft lean. So let's tighten this up. Yep. You happy? Is your spirit level good? Yeah. Yeah. It's actually spot on. Right. So that is not close. No, I've got to slacken off a bit. Trouble is, as I'm tightening it, it's... <laughs> that's close. Are we still in, in the ballpark? In the bubble park? Yep. OK, so that's good. What next? If you're wondering what that noise is, by the way, that's Jack's Optimist. Um, <laughs> which uh, we've set up. It's a little bit breezy for him to play in it today in the marina, but uh, we'll see, maybe later. So this is the A bracket that goes on the bottom. We were originally just going to have two H brackets, but we're now going to go for the A bracket. Um, so what we've got to do is th this bit goes lower down on that tube that we've already mounted. These are an amazing piece of engineering. They allow you 
uh, 40 to 80 degrees of spread, I think, and of course, pivot. So you can put these in pretty much any position. These come out and you cut them down to the length that you want. And of course, we'll mock that up in plastic first. Um, and then these brackets go on the end and bolt to the transom. And we've got the teak pads, uh, which I will have a look and see if I need to shape those like I did the plastic one uh, to go onto the transom. So that goes onto the plastic tube. I'm going to go on here like this. Now remember, there's the plastic collar that goes inside there, which will go over the steel, the stainless tube, uh, but I don't need to use that for this bit because this tube is just the right size to fit in there anyway. Um, so that's going to go about here. Let's do this. Mostly I'm tightening this up. I want to leave it adjustable, but I want to tighten it up enough that it doesn't fall in the flipping sea. I mean, really, you want your other supports to come down slightly, don't you? I think so, yeah. So if it's too low because of the curve of your transom, they're going to end up being... I feel like I want a bigger gap than that, though. And I yeah. feel like, you know, we've got... How much have we got to actually play with there? We've actually got, like, 500 mil. So I've moved this lower bracket further down. I just wanted to get a little bit more of a span so that it wasn't all coming from the same, you know, a, a mounting point that's too close together. You can either have a bacon, smoked bacon and egg baguette. Smoked bacon and egg baguette, okay. Or you can have, um, egg mayonnaise. Are you standing behind me? Where are you? Egg mayonnaise. Oh, egg mayonnaise, right, yeah. Or tuna mayo. Ooh, tuna mayo sounds good. Tuna mayo sounds amazing. Eh? Hey. Yeah. Awesome, thank you. We need to go to the art club tonight because we have to buy you and some beer, which is which is tragic that we have to go and buy beer. It's a real pain in the bum having to do these things, but you know, it's. Yeah, what a shame, having to go and buy you and beer. Well, we just had a disaster. I just dropped our brand new GoPro Hero 12 with our road mic adapter into the marina. So I don't know how much footage there's gonna be, but we'll carry on from where we are. Uh, let's do a recap just so we can see exactly where we're up to. What we have done so far is mounted the top bracket of the hydrovane as you can see uh, we've chamfered the backing pad and we've got the bottom bracket mounted on there we're using plastic tube to eye it all up and make sure it's all level uh, and the next job is to um, install the two bottom brackets for the a bracket to go to the bottom of the transom that's really ruined my day it's four meters deep here it's in the marina we're going to wait till low tide and see if we can see it. But at the minute, it's, it's, it's completely, completely out of reach. Not, not a chance of getting, getting a boat hook or anything onto it. We'll just see what we can see at low tide. What we've got here, we've got the top bracket, which is the H bracket, bolted onto the uh, nylon pad, which has been chamfered on the back to match the curvature of the hull of the transom. That's not sicker-flexed or sealed on yet, and it hasn't got the spread of flake, but it's it nipped up tight. And we've eyed this up with the mast and used a spirit level to make sure that this um, trim, this kind of template tube, the plastic tube, is perfectly level or as perfectly level as we can get it. I'll try not to drop this GoPro in the sea. Oh, wounded. But the next thing is mount these and see how we get on with that. Now, even though I've got tape around the bottom of this tube, I've put some um, a, a lanyard on it just to make sure that this doesn't end up in the drink like the GoPro did. So we've now got these two sections of the A bracket assembled. Uh, so we can cut two lengths of plastic tube to go in here to get our distance back to the transom now. No, they are not even close. Not 
not even close to being the right diameter. Lunch is ready. I'm in the doghouse for dropping the GoPro in the sea. I just feel awful because that's like we're on the old GoPro basically, which is crap by comparison. Um, and it's on its last legs, it keeps crashing. So we're having tuna baguettes and crisps. And I'm um sorry, my shoes. I'm trying not to feel too guilty about dropping this flipping GoPro. I'm really sorry. It's fine, it's one of those things. I know, but you wait till later. <laughs> I'll beat you later. So um, the plastic tube that we've got for this bit is a slightly different diameter and won't quite go in the, the shorter bits of the A-frame, which is fine. Um, we know how long they are anyway, they're 450 mil. Um, and that'll give us enough that we can nip off a little bit more. The Hydrovein supply these extra length, so I'm not gonna cut them both down. I'm gonna keep that other one as a nice piece of uh, stainless for some other job. And I'm gonna cut this down to two lengths of 450 mil, which will probably be fractionally over length but we'll be okay. There you go, I've cut these down to the uh, slightly over length. I've actually just cut one of the tubes in half to begin with, uh, it precisely in half, 15 and a half inches or something like that, to, um, uh, to just eye it up and then we can trim a little bit off and a little bit off until we get it right. <laughs> No, I don't wish that on anybody. <laughs> Somebody's flying around with a drone and I'm, I'm annoyed at myself. So Melissa said, would it make me feel better if it fell out of the sky? But no, I don't wish that misfortune on anyone. So that goes in there. That's pretty good. Yeah, Chris, I'm going to need your hand here, mate. What I want to know is, if we measure down and across, is, am I going to end up inside that gas locker, or more worryingly, smack bang on the bulkhead where the gas locker is? Okay, so, so this hole, just, you know, ballpark, and 31, down. So Andy's just trying to work out um, where he's got to drill. Because he doesn't want to end up drilling is the in the bulkhead hole. between the gas locker. So he doesn't mind if he goes in the gas locker, but he doesn't the want spirit. to go no. in between the two. No. Right, that's better. I've taken the lens cover off the GoPro, mm -hmm. and now there's less glare on the screen. Okay. Because it was all just blown out. Right, this is as far outboard as I can get this tube now. What we're doing now is gradually just cutting down the stainless tube and uh, to get the geometry exactly right um, and figuring out where exactly the pads can go on the inside because of the the gas locker bulkhead it's a little bit of um it's a little bit problematic not massively just a, just a little bit kind of oh needs a little bit of thinking about and we want to get it exactly right we're going for the main stainless tube because we need it to be more rigid now uh, we're putting in the uh, milled uh, turned plastic collar to take up the slack and we're going to tighten up that top bearing and we're going to make sure the dinghy stays underneath it so nothing can fall out of place. We are getting there, definitely. I'm gonna stop for an ice cream. But uh, yeah, it's just, it's not a difficult job to do, but it's gotta be done with great care and attention. And you've gotta get the geometry right. And that's why we're, I mean, people who fit this, the guys at Hydrovane, those guys would fit these so much quicker, but I'm just going really slowly and painstakingly to make sure it's correct. Right, I've come out here into the middle of nowhere. Because I need to cut some spreader plates to go to the inside of the transom. Uh, I'm going to crouch down here out of the wind. Uh, I need to I need to cut these spreader plates out of this piece of stainless. Uh, 
I can't do that in the marina, obviously. Too much noise, too much risk of people not liking grinding going on. Understandably, fine. So I'm just gonna, I've come out here into the middle of nowhere where I can go against the side of this wall and just snip these pieces off so that I can put these on the back of the transom to spread the load of the hydrovane. There you go, there's my three plates here in my hand. Uh, and I've got to mark them up and drill them for the back of the um, transom. Today I am feeling really, really pregnant, so I'm going to do something that it doesn't involve much effort to start with. <laughs> um, and I have yeah um a little hobby that i have is vinyl cutting um so i'm going to try um and make the lettering for the boat because i feel like it's about time she has her name on her here you go thanks jack jack's just done me a glass of water yeah so that's my mission today to cut some vinyl so the name needs to go there i'm gonna have a look at the front and see if there's a gap where it could go. That would mean moving the dinghy as well. Oh, it could go there. It's a tough decision. But either way it can go, it, it will be about the same size. So I'm going to cut it, cut it to, to size and then we can tape it on with the backing thing and see where we like it. So the first thing I've got to do is try and decide on the font, um, which is a hard decision. So I think we've chosen our text, um, a unanimous decision. Um, between Andy Jack and I. Um, the nice thing is though because I can cut the vinyl if we don't like it we can just change it. Okay so that's what we've gone for. So on my board I can cut 12 inches at a time. Um, unfortunately it doesn't cut, cut a continuous so I can't just feed vinyl in. So I think I've got about 21 inches um, of space to use. Um, so I can spread the two words, Ocean Melody, across the two. So I'm just going to adjust that now. Just move that out of the way. That's for the back later. That will be about right. So I'm just going to have a look on a tape measure. So it's saying that that would be, in total, at 22 by about two inches. I don't know whether that's big enough. Jack has got me the vinyl. Oh! Yeah, vinyl. And, uh, Vinyl. And transfer paper because I haven't got the big mat with me I can normally do a lot bigger than this but the one that I've got is 12 by 12 uh, which is this one um, and I want my letters to be my each word oh can't hold my phone we've broken the GoPros you know um, yeah I can't oh, I don't even know what I'm saying I can't what can't I do yeah, if I make each word 12 inches long, um, then they're too, the text is too small. So I want my text about three and a half inches. Jack, can you please be my tripod? Sure. Right, so I need 12. I would normally have a big desk and a board and stuff for this, but obviously we're slowly moving stuff for board. So... So I'm just trying to get these in line um, here rather than trying to do it on the boat. I'm just wondering. You know that we, the original melody, Steel Melody, we called it Steel Melody, this one, Ocean Melody. Mm -hmm. If you got an even bigger boat, what would, what would we call it? Cruise Line Melody. <laughs> Where the hydrovane mounts onto the transom, uh, as we said, we've got these teak, or well, got plastic and a couple of teak, uh, pads. And the purpose of those is so that if your transom is curved, you can shape the back of it or chamfer the back of it to match, and that's fine. 
um, and we did that with the top one. Uh, but what we found is we actually don't need these on the bottom one because the transom is completely flat where the brackets bolt on. Um, so we can just bolt the brackets and s put some uh, marine grade sealant on there um, and bolt them through and they'll be absolutely fine. Um, but I'm just, although I don't need these, um, I'm not desperately keen on the aluminium casting being hard up against the gel coat because I've got a feeling if there is some flex, it could dig in, like the dig in on the corner and chip the gel coat or crack it. So we've got some super heavy duty, hard um, rubber uh, pads that we're gonna, that we've cut using that as a template, um, or Chris has cut. Is that right? I don't think these are right, Chris. I don't think they're right at all because you've cut these and the hole centres are like a trillion miles away. I just use them, mate. Uh, Look oh, at I've that. Cut them on the top one. That's what I've got. Oh. I've cut them using the top. Uh, Have you cut them using the top bracket? Yeah. Right. I thought it was the same. No, no, the, uh, the top and the A brackets are different. We'll make some more of these and we're going to put these with a load of sealant under the um, uh, bottom brackets. There you go, I've cut some more because uh, Chris cut those pads to fit the, um, the H bracket, not the A bracket. So that's fine, it doesn't matter. Uh, it was a 10 second job to cut some more, so I'm just going to put the holes in them and then we can mount and seal this all up and it will be finished. So just to clarify what we're doing, we put these spreader plates on the back. Uh, you know, there's not even a washers on there in the minute. Uh, we're just we're just dry fitting the plates on the back because in a minute we're going to be putting the sealant and the Sikaflex um, all over everything, and we don't want to suddenly find while we're with a tube of Sikaflex in our hand that oh my goodness this plate doesn't fit because the holes aren't lined up and we've got to suddenly start opening holes out by half a mil or something to get it to fit so that would just be a pain in the bum so we're dry fitting these currently uh, in preparation to do the final seeker flex and fit it all out so we're just taking this one off oh. is that port or starboard i'm backwards uh, oh, sorry, port. okay i'll be on port so we're just taking these nuts off and then we can check the spreader plate. We don't need a rubber backing on this one because that's got the nylon backing from Hydrovane. Now what we've got to do is take it all apart again, smother everything in sealant and Sikaflex, a, a liberal coating, and uh, bolt it all back up. Done. Duca, you would be proud of me. Sikaflex 291i, marine adhesive sealant, multi-purpose marine adhesive sealant and bedding compound. That'll do. I think that'll probably do the job, don't you? While we've been doing the sealant on the uh, hydrobane brackets, Melissa has been doing this. No, it's fine. I think that's lovely. <laughs> it is big, but it's not too big. I think that is bang on. Love it. Yeah, yeah. Move it about and stuff. Yeah, I think that's great. Okay. That's great. Well done. Okay. Thank you. It's going to be a dinghy job. It is going to be a dinghy job. We'll go around in the dinghy. Um, what's gone on here? I've been in the Laz. Sicker flex in the back of this top spreader plate. Sure. So I'm, I'm just um, tightening up the last few bolts. I think so. Really? I think so. I'm going to do it in the final. <laughs> no, probably not. Okay. Looks fairly fluid. That's, that's a thing. Right, shall I let go and you tell me if it floats? Yeah. It's floaty. It's, 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 it's a floaty thing. It's floaty. Right, so that's that way. I think what we do is we take this uh, cap off the front and then we slide it on with the drive unit facing backwards and um, and then as it's going on we put the tiller on uh, you know as it's sliding down I'm also thinking the whole shaft can go down a few 
uh, several inches uh, so that the rudder is buried deeper and has more authority and that the drive unit is less interfered with you know the the mizzen boom what we're actually thinking we're in talks with um sail making companies and rigging people we're actually thinking about just taking a few inches off the end of the mizzen boom because it'll, it'll bring the mizzen boom basically back in line with the transom because it what we would lose in sail area would be negligible and it would just be a lot easier to manage i think So the lovely thing about this XT vein, still got the XT sticker on, is that we can do that. Well, the reason I bought the XT vein was because I thought that in the down position it would clear underneath the mizzen boom, but it is not even close. Not even close. Um, so all we can do when we jibe is come up here just go take that take that off jibe or tack and put it back on and do not invoke do not jibe by mistake so to adjust the hydrovane from from the cockpit or from without having to come all the way back here you actually have a piece of cord which just simply goes through here round this and you see how as I turn that it's just changing the angle of the of the vein and that's that you can smell somebody's barbecue and it's smelling very good yeah, it's just over there, it's it's... so I'm just gonna melt the ends of these together um, just basically heat them up like this with a lighter and when they're all gooey like that, stick them together. Obviously it's not staying there, that's the main sheet. But the idea now is that when I pull this wire, uh, this bit of string, watch this, watch this. This is so cool. So I can now change the position of the vane to point into wind and that will steer the boat for us. How cool is that? Right, I'm gonna take that down. I'm gonna film Jack sailing his optimist with Chris, who's already loving it, <laughs> standing up sailing the oppie around the marina. I'm gonna take that down and then it's tidy up time. So what's going on this morning? Chris is teaching Jack how to rig the optimist. Boat still looks trashed. Yeah, I'm cleaning out the, uh, the lars. Remember, you can't sail into the wind. Yeah. So we've got to sail back and forth across it. We'll try if we can, see if we can get all the way up the marina, and then we can run all the way back down. Maybe. There you go. Okay. Right. Is that the way you want to sit? Yeah. So now it would be on that side. So you sit on there. And that Super looks cool. Vintage. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> Hydrovane since 1968. Exciting. Yeah. And there's still plenty of na space for the name on the back. Yeah. So some very kind people on a boat on the other side of the marina lent us some stuff to try and get the um, GoPro back. Um, they lent us a snorkel and a mask. Thankfully we didn't have to use it. They also lent us a, a magnet um, on a long rope in, in case there was something metal but I didn't think there was anything magnetic on it. That didn't work but um, some people on another boat lent us a really long boat hook and I managed to tape it to our boat hook and somehow miraculously managed to hook it um, but my hope was that we would be able to retrieve the footage who knows i know might. plugged it in and we can't you are i put the memory card in i know you need to clean it with acetone yeah, I've, I've got it 
You've got the footage. I've got the footage. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> right, okay. So we've got the footage and you will have seen it already. <laughs> I just thought I'd wind Andy up because I'm I was I'm gonna mean. clean it with some meth, not acetone. No, no. I, I gave it a clean and I put it in and I've got all the footage and managed to copy it to the computer. Oh, GoPro good. is probably definitely dead. Yeah. But we the GoPro, the media mod, the Volta hand grip. It's basically what's called the Creator Edition, which we just bought after our trip back sailing back from uh, Dartmouth because yeah. a lot of the footage we were just really disappointed. Yeah, and this with one's the probably actually from this this camera that you're two watching seconds. now. So um, we were really disappointed with the footage from this camera that you're watching on now, and and when you compare them, it, there's just no, there's just it's so much better. Yeah, there's footage. no comparison. So unfortunately, we're going to have to get another GoPro, which is gutting but it's one of those things yeah. and that's what happens when you play around in the sea yeah. um, but look who we're trying to have a youtube yeah. sailing channel look who we're passing now uh, hi wow going to put the sticker on, <laughs> hopefully. Um, but it's, um, it's got a bit windy and there's lots of lines. Now I can adjust it. Pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well done. That looks amazing. That looks Oh, look at that. Oh, that looks, that looks good actually. That does. I'm happy with that. Right. Woo. This is Chris, Chris, this is Daddy. <laughs> we need to do our water line, repaint the water line, it's a disgrace. Right, I'm getting blown around. Yeah, let's go in. Hi, Dick, hi, Devane, and a name. Just need to do the one on the aft end. Ooh. Sorry. 